কুলি বাইমুল ক্রাজ আনন্দ চ্যাপ্টার ওয়ান মুনু ও মুনু ও মুন্ডু শাউটেড গজরি ফ্রম দ্য ভারান্ডা অফ এ স্কোয়াট সিকুয়েস চার্ড লিটল মাড হার্ট থ্যাচড উইথ স্ট্রং উইথ স্টুড আপন দ্য এজ অফ আ হিল অবাউট আ হান্ড্রেড ইয়ার্ডস অ্যাওয়ে ফ্রম দ্য ভিলেজ ইন দ্য ভ্যালি অ্যান্ড হার ইগল আইস এক্সপ্লোর দ্য ট্র্যাক অফ গোল্ড ডাস্ট উইচ ওয়ার্কড ইটস এক্জ্যাক্ট কোর্স থ্রু রাফ স্ক্রাব beyond the flat roofs of the village houses under the relentless haze of a kangra sun she could not see him munu oh munu oh mundu where have you died where have you drifted you of the evil star come back your uncle is leaving soon and you must go to the town she shouted again with a shrill hoarse voice and her Gaze traveled beyond the mango grove to the silver line of the river Bees and roved angrily among the greenery of the ferns and weeds and bushes that spread on either side of the stream against the purple gleam of the low hills. Munu, ay munu! She called again, exasperated and raising her voice this time to the highest pitch to which in her anger and hate she could carry it. Where have you died? Where have you gone, you ominous orphan? Come back and be gone. The piercing soprano resounded through the valley and fell on Munu's ears with the dreadening effect of all its bitter content. He heard, but he did not answer. He merely turned from the shade of the tree where he sat hidden to see her scarlet dress disappearing into the hut. He had been grazing cattle on the banks of the bees and had begun to play while the buffaloes and cows in his charge had entered the low waters of the marsh where they now sat chewing the cud of little comfort that the cool of the water afforded against the torrid heat of the morning sun Your aunt is calling you said Jessing son of the village landlord clean of face and apparel nudging Munu's bare body with his elbow. Can't you hear? Have you no manners, you savage, that you let your aunt shout herself hoarse and don't answer her? He was Munu's rival for leadership of Bishan and Bishambar and the other village boys. He knew that Munu was to depart for town that day and he wanted to hurry him out of the way as soon as possible. Don't go yet, Bishan the fat one pleaded. Your aunt only wants you to run an errand for her. Then he turned banteringly to Jaising and said, You call him a savage for not going home when his aunt calls. But what about you who abuse your mother for asking you to stay indoors and not go out in the heat of the noon? You won't even go to school, though your father gives you two annas a day for pocket money. We go to school. And during the holidays we graze the cattle. What are you doing here? Pray, if not idling. You haven't even the courage to steal a few mangoes. Munu collected all these, so let him suck a few more before he goes home. I don't steal mangoes, said Jaising. I buy them. And he continued righteously. I only said he ought to go because his aunt is so rude that she will abuse us for keeping him here. He has to go away to town with his uncle. It is true you are going away to town? asked fiery little Bishambar. Yes, I am going away this morning, replied Munu and felt a quiver go through his belly. But you are only 14 years old yet and you are only in the fifth class at school, cried Bishambar. My aunt wants me to begin earning uh, money, said Munu and she says she wants a son for, of her own. My uncle says I am grown up. up and must fend for myself. He has got me a job in the house of the Babu of the bank where he works in Shampur. It must be nice to live in Shampur, remarked Jai Singh. Now jealous of the importance Munu assumed in his eyes because he was going to live in town where there were beautiful things to eat, beautiful clothes to wear and beautiful toys to play with. Munu smiled at this but his smile seemed to say If it wasn't my last day here, I would give you such a sock on the jaw that you would never dare to aspire to the leadership of the boys. 
For though Munu was young, he had more than a vague idea of how Jai Singh's father was responsible for his impending misfortunes. He had heard of how the landlord had seized his father's five acres of land because the interest on the mortgage covering the unpaid rent had not been forthcoming when the rains had been scantily scanty and the harvests bad. And he knew how his father died. A slow death of bitterness and disappointment and left his mother a penniless beggar. To support a young brother-in-law and a child in arms, the sight of his mother grinding grain between the scarred surfaces of millstones which she durated round and round, round and round by the wooden handle, now with her right hand, now with her left, day and night, had become indelibly imprinted on his mind. Also the sight of her as she had laid dead on the ground with a horrible yet sad, set expression on her face had sunk into his subconscious with all its weight of tragic dignity and utter resignation. Will you never come back? inquired Jesse more insistently. No, never. I never want to come back, replied Munu, urged by a genuine bitterness of to lie, although in his heart he knew it were better to irritate Jaising by telling the truth. For in spite of the fact that his aunt was always abusing him, in spite of the fact that she ordered him about asking him to do this and to do that, in spite of the fact that she beat him more than he beat his cattle, he, re he really did not want to go to the town. At least not yet. He had dreamed, of course, of all the wonderful things which the village folk spoke about when they came back from the towns. The Lalas, the Babus and the Sahibs from beyond the black waters, the silk clothes they wore and the delicacies they ate. He was especially interested in machines such as he had read about in the science primer of the fourth class. But he had meant to go to the town when he had passed all his examinations here and was ready to learn to make machines himself. Meanwhile, it was pleasant to sit here with his fellows, all the little boys of the same age as himself, for when he had stolen enough fruit during the wanderings behind the cattle in the morning, they ate it in the humid, sweet-scented shade of the banyan tree. Some fruit or others was always in season. Ripe yellow mangoes dropped by drizzle in the spring and could be easily hidden in the grass and the hay. Purple and red jamans and long green mulberries fell in sickly profusion during the summer and could be stored on broad banana leaves. In the winter, the stick-like sugarcane aroused no suspicion in the garden who drove lazily in his sister. Then one could play, you can catch me only in the air, when I am seated neither on earth nor on wood. This involved a constant jumping on and off trees and Munu was a genius at climbing trees. He would hop onto the trunk like a monkey, climb the bigger branches on all, four, on all fours, swing himself to the thinner of shoots as if he were dancing on trapeze, and then divine, uh, diving dangerously into space, he would jump from one tree to another. And then there was a cool breeze which soothed the fatigue of the body and relieved the natural heat, the snow breeze that was rising even as if he sat there now, stirring the acacia trees while the cicadas rasped in the thickets, the frogs croaked in the shallows and the swamps, the birds sang, the butterflies flitter, flitted over the wild flowers and the insects buzzed over the pollen for honey. The blood of little Munu ran to the tune to, of all this lavish beauty, and he would rather have had all the machines come here than tear himself away from the sandy margins of the still backwaters where he played. But Munu, O oh Munu, O oh Mundu, came his aunt's voice again. The face of his aunt with its hard jaw, its bright red cornered eyes, its sharp nose and thin lips, all in a malevolent, violent, framework of dark hair flashed across his mind. He got up. All the boys, even Jaising, rose to their feet. He called his cattle. The boys shouted for their cows and buffaloes too. The bony-hipped, thin-flanked, big-horned creatures 
emerged from the water and splashing mud in the bog, dripping globules of froth trailed wearily ahead of their little guides, mute against the abuse and beatings they that uh, were used to urge them on towards home a little more quickly today than ever before.